see. So. And he was a lovely tenant. They had a, it's a beautiful room, the room down there. Yeah. So it's the best room in the house. I see. It's a, you know, it was, this, it was built to be the front parlor. Right. And it has a beautiful parquet floor. Right. And beautiful moldings. Yeah. And John never did a thing with it. I see. He's had a throw an old couch in there, a couple of old chairs. And it looked like, uh, uh, totally unfurnished. And he is, that's, he could be bothered with, with oh, making, do you want making it all fancy. Is it Freud on the front of the house? Hmm? Freud and Roosevelt. How come? Oh, a person of Larry's had put on it. We were both children of the Depression. Yeah. And Freud, Roosevelt pulled us out of the Depression. Yeah. And uh, Freud, because Freud pays the bills. My I husband see. was a psychoanalyst. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, your husband had put them there? You placed them he there. He worked it, it was with John at, yeah. and, up at the outside. Yeah. How was it that um, John, you, how often did John come here? John what? Uh, did he see a lot of patients here? Yes, he saw quite a few. Yeah. What sort I of patients? I didn't watch his food. I didn't watch, we, 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 set, we set this house, house up so it was completely separate. We have, we use the main entrance the way you came in today. Mm. And there's another door immediately next to it. Mm. And the tenant, patients came in that door, walked up one flight to see the doctors. Mm. It's two days a day, they do the same thing. We don't, we didn't, I did ever, mm. had any sense of who John's patients were. When did you move here? We, he moved in, we moved in the house in 19, well, it's 42 years ago. Okay. And he was our first doctor, mm -hmm. tenant. And, and that was about 41 years ago. Okay. We knew him before then, but yeah. we, we didn't have an office to, uh, to offer. And you were an actress in the theatre? I was working in, I worked in the theatre. Yeah. I was an actress, a minor. I was never a great, a great cheese at the theater. All right. And did did John come to see you play? Oh, yes, he used to come over and have dinner. Yeah. With us every once in a while. Yeah. We chat sometimes. Right. Uh, he just, he liked to chat. I liked yeah. to listen to him. And did he talk a lot about Mexico? He did. He told me the wonderful story, the, the land of the blind. Did he tell you that one? Have you heard that one? I have read a story called The Land of the Blind. Oh, they wrote it, he wrote it up? Yeah. It was a good story. Yeah. And the point he made about it is he was, he was a youngster at the time. He was a young doctor. Yeah. And he went where no man dared to tread. And I don't think he was alone. He was with some other people. Yeah. But uh, he marched in there and they saw this awful happening. Yeah. And uh, decided it wasn't catchy. And they would find out what it was. Mm -hmm. And find it was a very simple cure, as I recall. It's like the diseases in Africa, because mm. it can be shortened to cure now with, mm. with very serious venereal diseases. Mm. It can be cured with one shot of penicillin. Could have been something like river blindness. With the blindness, yeah. was, the adults got blind. Yeah. Children would lead them around. And when a child got old enough, so the sight, I, I, I sight started to, f to fade, mm. then they felt. They were growing up. They were mature. Right. There was a pr certain pride in it. Yeah. When the children and the adults, it was very strange. You said this is Mexico, and this was this little river they were right. on, and there were communities up and down the river. There were people on either side of this particular community mm. wouldn't go near them. They were all afraid they'd catch it. Did he talk about his family? Not much. Not much. He considered the boys his family. Mm. All right. He talked about them. Did you meet any of the boys? Yes, but I don't remember. I couldn't tell you much about them because we didn't spend any time talking to them. They seemed uh, very well behaved and uh, they were very devoted to John, but not uh, overly. How many of the boys did you meet? Uh, we only met two, I think. <laughs> and I didn't even, couldn't tell you which ones they were. Couldn't be Sebastian and Matthias? Sebastian is a good name, I remember that. Okay. And they were German or French or what country yeah. did the boys come from? Who come from? The boys. Well, they were here. Yeah. I think they were Polish. Some, if one or two. It was the, that was the road he was on. Right. From the uh, from the ovens, uh, there was just, the people who came out of those concentration camps were mostly in in, the, in that line from mm -hmm. Poland through Germany to Paris. They were heading for Paris. Head for Paris. And uh, he walked to the road, and he. And he is funny. He had, I said his office here was very plain, and it was. But he did, when he was abroad, he had a tent, and he had a beautiful rug on it. He traveled with a Persian rug of some sort. Really? And did he have any works of art in his office? Yeah, what? Did he have any paintings in his office? Paintings? Yeah. No, I don't think so. 
He didn't have... The office was completely barren, it seemed. Right. I didn't think he wanted anything to impinge on his patients when they, when they were talking to him. And I'm told he was a good therapist, though I wouldn't know. I, wouldn't, I didn't mm. monitor his patients. Mm. But my husband said he was a good therapist. And, he right. and how many boys were there? It was six boys that he adopted, as I recall. Mm. And I mean, there must have been many others that he mm. helped along the way. Right. I had into his tent mm. on the road. Amazing. And, and he had... What he did, he, he also had, he had, there was sort of like two sides to it, because one was this very simple man who took care of needy people that worked with the needy and poor, more toward. And then there was this boy that had, he knew a lot of fancy people. And he had, he had some elderly lady friends who was taken to the opera. Okay. And he loved to go to the opera. He'd get all done and stuff in his tuxedo. Okay. And ballet? And go to the opera. Well, the opera was what we heard about mostly. Okay. You know, it isn't as if he was a buddy. Yeah. He was, uh, we didn't hmm. have that kind of relationship, but he'd come up and have dinner with Ed and me and the kids, hmm. and it was always perfectly charming. Did you ever visit him in his place? Mm hmm Yeah? No, not at all. His office. I do what I remember about John. Did you ever meet his wife? No, I didn't. I just never knew he had a wife. He had been married, yeah. And she was in New York. She worked mm. with someone called Paul Hofer. At Columbia. Columbia? Yeah, Columbia University in neurology. But he... <laughs> he did have a social life there. It faded out. I mean, the marriage faded out at some yeah. point. I don't know when. Did you know any other close friends of his? I only knew him from, from his relation, his work at Einstein, the people we knew jointly at Einstein. What about artists? Or did he, Artists or writers? I was very interested in artists and writers, yeah. but I don't know what his post was like. Every once in a while, when somebody would be mentioned, he'd say, oh, yes, I know him. But he was very modest. He didn't. Okay. Did he talk about Auden, the poet? Yes, I thought he did talk about Auden. And he had a, and this, on the same he reads his love song of Shade, he mm. was proof rock. How come you had that? He gave you, the, he, he had the tape made and he gave I it. I don't know, my husband brought it home one day. Oh, I see. Nobody wanted it. Was that the only thing on the tape? I don't know. I don't think so. It's just a, I think there are a few words on it first. I never heard it because I never had anything to play it on. See, okay. I thought there's a tape deck here, but they don't have yeah. managed that particular size tape. And <clears throat> but he was... What did you like about John? I think it was something to do with spiritual quality. John had a lot of spiritual quality himself. I don't think he had any religion, but he had... Well, he had a, a spirit. He felt he was a little otherworldly. I don't think he was gay, but I think he was very, uh, he was not particularly sexual. He wasn't, you ever saw him looking at a woman and was, uh, with sex in his eyes. Uh, but I don't think he, would, he was gay either. I don't think he, he was, I think he was just sort of neuter. But I knew him only in a special way. I met him when he was a much older man, and he, I didn't know him when he was young, so I can't speak to that. I said, mm. except for the story she told. Right. I mean, Milton Rosenbaum. Who has, I visited Milton in... Did you Al go to Albuquerque? Yes, you know? I did, yes. Good for you. I, I spent three days with Milton. It's great. And uh, he told me a lot about John's love life in the... Um... Milton would know. <laughs> but I just it... got a letter from Milton last week. <laughs> right. Okay. But it's not a very... He never had a very... How can I say? He never had one partner, one soulmate for his life. There were clearly at times he was drawn to yeah. people, but it, nothing lasted with him. But he was very... He didn't seem needy. He liked to be taken to the opera. Yeah. Do you think they were like mother figures for him? Or? Yes. I'm trying to think if I think of anything. I can't think of it. He was so, so gentle. He had a gentle face and a gentle manner. He talked very softly. He thought he never, never think he'd really rile him. Man's inhumanity to man. He once said that Belton turned his hair white. Turned his hair white? That how he became white? He was so Maybe. shocked. He had white hair. Hmm. But he was... He told stories, of, a lot of stories about going, uh, walking the trail with the, with the refugees, but I don't remember the details of it. I had a lot of little children around here at the same time, and I, I couldn't. He had something to do with, with, with Buddhism. You had the feeling he'd make a good mystic. Now, there was a little something of that in his, in his nature. But you only met him when he came to Einstein. Yes. Right. I didn't, didn't know who no. before. Mm -hmm. And nobody did. I know my husband, when he first told me about him, that we have this extraordinary new man. He's taking up the day the and he's not a doctor. Mm. Everybody else was a doctor. Mm. Did John leave anything here when he... Did John? Did he just leave any papers or anything from his office? Nothing I know of. 
I mean, no. I mean, if Dr. Cozy would no. tell me. But there's nothing left here. Left when he here. died. When he died, he there's didn't... He, there's left. There was... I think we just disposed of it. I don't think there was anything to salvage. Mm. It was, neither my husband and I were great savers. Mm. We had... I might have some Snapchat someplace oh, upstairs, right. but I have to go through a lot of pictures okay. to find them. Okay. If I find any, I'll send them to you. That would be kind. Thank you. Uh, I had one. I had one headshot. It looked like it was taken by a studio mm. photographer, even. I found very few photos and no no papers. There are no personal papers of him at all. Yeah. So that I do this project by talking to people who I don't knew think him. Yeah, I don't think he wrote, he wrote. He was a writer. He wasn't being convinced by publish or perish. Yeah, no. And, uh, I don't think he published anything. I don't think he published any articles. No. He just told us his stories. Yeah. Did he talk about his patients? Not no. to me. He no. may have talked to my husband. Okay. It's like one well, of types of yeah. very close about, right. about patients. Yeah. It's and did he talk... I never knew about my husband's patients to me very much either. Right. There was this one artist, Barry Bandler. Barry Bandler. A painter. Yes, I know the name. I think he would have been at somebody's party. And he was very interested in dance therapy. I don't know what his special expertise was yeah. as a therapist. He said, he would be a sweet guy to be a therapist. Yes. He would be hard on, okay. on his yeah. clients. Everybody says he was really patient. Calm and patient. Yeah. He tells stories about his childhood and... I just don't remember them well enough. Talking about his, he was in the army in Mexico in a lowly position of a junior officer or something. But very, he never had any real leadership role. Uh, but that's what, I, he doesn't even really like the idea of being in the army. But he, he, they had to do it. He had to do it. It was a family obligation, evidently. Mm. And uh, that's what he found the, the, the land of the blind. And he, as they say, he, just as he didn't like being in the well, I remember she didn't like, he didn't feel comfortable in the army. You think he was in the Mexican army? The Mexican army, yeah. Okay, God. Anything is possible with John Thompson. That's true. Did he mm. talk about his childhood? No, not to me. Mm. We were so busy, this was such a busy house when he lived yeah. here. We had, I had four little boys, yeah. uh, ranging in age from one to eight. And we were running after the kids all the time. Okay. And we didn't have a lot of time for... Okay. Intimate soul talks. Mm. But he liked he liked the family. Yes, he liked the family. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think he must have needed a family. Bandler. I think we saw it would see his art one day. And I don't think we liked it too much. My husband and I were very fussy. Okay. They look a bit like that one in the middle. Uh, that was done by an architect, Percival Goodman. Oh, and he was principally a designer of synagogues. Oh. You're the collector. Was it you that co you collected all the paintings? I didn't. It's my husband. We didn't get it. Nice. My father was a dentist. Artists gave him pictures instead yeah, of the treatment. Same. Yeah. And uh, there was one artist who came to New York called Samson Shamus. I don't know. Samson Shamus, a Jewish artist. Interesting. He... Well, most of the work around here is that uh, we know have some connection with it. Yeah. I just don't know that I could be very much help. Okay. No, it was very kind, and you've given me a very vivid impression of John. Well, he was a love. I loved him. Yeah? Man, he was an uncomplaining tenant. He never made a fuss of if the heat went off. Mm. And he was, was it one floor down? Or two, two floors down. Two floors down. Yes. It's originally, the floor below here is how I, mm. I read to a, a buddy, you know, friend, mm -hmm. who lost her husband about the same time I lost mine. Mm. And... Uh, she has what used to be my living room was downstairs, mm -hmm. and the room under there was a guest room. Mm -hmm. So uh, then under that was the offices. And this was my children's playroom originally. I see. Okay. And it still has vestiges of it. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have a basketball ring anymore. All right, okay, had, yeah. My children, they want to come to New York. In what country? In England. Yeah. I have three. Just, you have three, yeah. yeah. Did John Thompson talk about any artists he knew? Yes, he, he had... I think he knew, uh, what's his name? I should have something that would just remind me about him. Dali? Dali? Salvador Dali? Salvador Dali? Did he know Dali? I, I think he did. don't know. I think he had. He was more interested in artists than, than in art. 